Hi, everyone. I'm going to wait another minute or so before starting to make sure everyone's able to log in okay. So I'll check back just here in just a moment. All right. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar, Configuration versus Customization. I'm your host, Marketing Specialist Nicole Kinchy, and today's presenter is Charlie Vanek, Vice President of Product Management. The runtime for today's webinar is going to be about 30 minutes, with time allowed at the end for Q&A. But before we get started, just have a few quick housekeeping items I want to go over. First, after the webinar, you're going to receive an email with a link to this recording, so please feel free to download it or forward it on to a friend or colleague if they couldn't join us today. Also, we will be posting this presentation on our resource hub, and if you hadn't had a chance to visit our resource hub, I highly encourage you to do so. You can go there by going to www.foundations.blackbaud.com or also directly through the Blackbaud website. Next, feel free to use that Q&A widget on your screen at any point in time if you have questions. We're going to wait till the end to answer all these questions, but please feel free to submit them at any point in time during the presentation. And lastly, don't forget the social conversation. You can access Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn right here during the webinar using the widgets on your screen. All you need to do is log into the social channel of your choice and include us in your post using at all right, and with that, let's get started. Charlie, it's all yours. Thanks, Nicole. My name is Charlie Vanek. I'm the Vice President of Product Management here at the Corporations and Foundations Business Unit as a part of BlackBod. Uh, I was have been part of this organization uh, for close to six years now, originally starting when our division was its own independent company called MicroEdge. You can follow me on Twitter, at Charles Vanek. And you're free to email me directly at charles.vanek at blackbod.com should you want to get into this topic, uh, which is of great interest, although for specialized people. But first, let me tell you about BBCon this year, the premier gathering for the social good economy. This year, our conference is in Orlando. Uh, there's going to be some exciting things having to do with a lot of the parks down there. Uh, and it's from October 9th through the 11th. Um, there were 2,200 folks there last year. We anticipate even more this year. Reasons to go are many. First of all, many uh, there will be many meaningful conversations with other leaders in the social good space. You're going to be able to see our roadmap and technology vision in over 100 sessions. You're going to connect with your peers to get energized, to community like no other. And you'll get new ideas and content from the myriad presentations, not only by BlackBaud employees, but by your peers also. And you'll learn from experts. We have experts all over the place. And again, over 200 breakout sessions are available. Go to bbconference.com to get early bird pricing, which is expiring soon. And just a few shameless plugs on, on some feedback from last year. Thanks, BBCon, for a fantastic conference. I learned so much and hoped everyone else did too. What a fantastic way to end it by hearing from all those who attended. Thank you so much, BlackBot. This is a great experience for me and has re-energized my focus. And on and on. We literally get hundreds of compliments about the conference. If you haven't gone, please consider this year. All right. Let's get to the meat of the topic, configurations versus customizations. So first off, what is a customization and what is a configuration? We're talking about software, we're here, and often our customers and really any software purchaser goes through a standard decision-making framework around this decision, or should I get customized 
software or should I get configurable software? So first off, what are they? Customization is a feature or extension or modification of a software feature that requires custom coding and some form of implementation. A configuration is where you use native tools in the system to change its behaviors and features. Now, those things kind of sound similar. So you might be asking yourself, what's the difference? So there's a key differentiation between customization and configuration. And basically it's this. Does the work done to enhance the feature or extend its capability roll with an upgrade? So all software providers provide upgraded versions of their software. If that customization then carries into that modern version, it's a, it's a, a configuration. In other words, when the software vendor releases the next version of the system, does the work you did require to be done? If the answer is yes, you have a customization. Congratulations, sort of. There's been an important shift in the industry in the last few years, and that, by that I mean the software providing industry. Um, it's how we think about, fundamentally how we think about software, and specifically purchase software. Software that is purchased tends to be tailored for very specific purposes. Think of low-end consumer purchase software, things like Microsoft Office products or Apple's iTunes as, or, and, or the iPhone as shown here. The software suites are purchased to fit a very specific need. Would you ever consider customizing them? That is, would you ever consider opening up, decompiling the files, inserting your own logic or your own features on an iPhone? Even if this were something that was relatively easy to do, nobody in their right mind would try to do it. As soon as Microsoft, or Apple in this case, released a newer version, the customizations would break. Um, and this is a, a simplistic but a very valuable uh, example. But let's talk about a more possibly real-life example. Now, often people think about buying an automobile as buying something that might be custom, but actually it's, configure, it's configurable. When you purchase a new car, all manufacturers give you options to configure these cars. You can have different kinds of wheels. You can get a more powerful engine. You could get standard or manual transmissions, get a different paint job, leather seats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You wouldn't really consider purchasing a new car and then, let's say, adding a new kind of engine that you built, built for yourself. Or maybe you would. The photograph here shows a standard configured vehicle and a customized vehicle. A customized vehicle. But perhaps you want to customize your vehicle. Once you start those customizations, a few things happen. One, you invalidate your warranty. You could surely find a technician and others to help you maintain and enhance your car customizations. It wouldn't be cheap. And it wouldn't be fast either. But if you were trying to find a technician to help you, your customized vehicle, it would take a lot of time for the technicians to, quote, get up to speed on your customized vehicle. The overall TCO, or total cost of ownership for the customized car, would be far greater than the configured car shown pre in the previous slide. Another consideration for these vehicles would be the need for regulatory compliance, or in our case, more relevant to us in software, security compliance. When you purchase a configured vehicle and configured software, it comes with a guarantee that is compliant with all the governing bodies. Not so with customization. Um, and an example to stick with the automobile analogy would include crash safety, EPA emissions, and others. Those of you who follow data security uh, as a hobby know that we've had to undergo some security revisions for handling the European market. If you've got a customized system, it's actually harder to address those situations. Now, let's say that you're part of an organization that is considering some purchasing some software. So what do you do? Well, you want to identify the, the solutions, or I'm sorry, the, the business problems confronting your organization and gather up requirements to find, you know, to, to address those, those needs. And then you're going to go out and you're going to find out who actually makes software that can address your needs. And then there's a question you say to yourself, what type of coverage, requirements coverage is out there in the marketplace, right? If most of your requirements are covered by commercial off-the-shelf software, purchase those and configure that. If maybe only 70 to 75% of your requirements are addressed 
in the marketplace, you could purchase that and add customizations to it. That's kind of partially customizations. And if they're not passing a threshold of, let's say, 50 or 60%, you might want to build some software on your own. On the other hand, given the trends in the software industry and having learned about software delivery now for decades, experts really don't they don't they don't recommend purchasing custom software for a lot of reasons. One of them is this. Gartner does some research around software. Their pull quote is this, 25% of IT spending was on unnecessary and redundant customization. This overspending is apparent in both the initial strategy and requirement stage and when the deployment and implementation stage also. So as an organization, you as a responsible stakeholder need to be aware that running down the path of customization can prove, can prove costly and actually redundant to the needs of the organization. Better rethink your workflow and rethink how the commercial off-the-shelf software can be used to help your organization with minimal amounts of change. Not only is there a cost to customize software, it's really a prescription for failure. Software customization, according to Axios Systems, these are software consultants, is also one of the most widely cited causes of failed software operation. System failure presents value gain from the solution becomes a cost rather than an asset. And hopefully you're not living this um, by having purchased customized software or even partially cu uh, customized software in your organization. Here's some other things you might want to think about when deciding on the type of, of software to purchase, customized or configurable. So first of all, the speed to deploy is an interesting um, topic for many folks. Commercial, I'm going to introduce uh, something called COTS packages. It's on the top title bar there. Commercial, and I just want to say, uh, define it, Com it's commercial off-the-shelf software. Uh, this is actually a government term. Uh, about 20 years ago, the, the government started requiring that standardized or commercial off-the-shelf solutions are the preferred way of purchasing software. It's an effort to take away all the bias that somehow is inherent in folks who make software decisions and get them on the standardized path. And it's often regulated and, and governed. Uh, there's a governance structure for govern, government purchasers. So commercial off-the-shelf software, endorsed by the government, promoted by the government, it's a term we'll use throughout the rest of this, this presentation. One of the great things about commercial off-the-shelf products are they're easy to deploy, especially those that are now gotten online, some SaaS products. You can design to fire these, these, these software applications up in literally a tenth of the time some customi customized work uh, gets to be done. There's a cost to that, that extended implementation time, and also a drag on your organization who are now effectively paying probably for two software, software solutions. Business benefits. There's one, there's a major, one of the major reasons why the software industry has gravitated towards software as a service solutions that are accessed through the internet, and that's because it lends itself to the scale needed to get a lot of customers. And what a lot of customers do for an organization like BlackBot is they're a great source of feedback and a great source of what to do in the future. By participating as a customer and purchasing a software product, you have the, not only the obligation, not an obligation, but we have the obligation to reach out to you to understand if our software is working for you or not. And we do that kind of in a crowdsourced way. We hear from hundreds, if not thousands, of our customers every year on features and details, big and small. And we take that feedback very seriously. The net result of all that feedback is we're pretty much addressing all the present business needs and problems. We're solving the business problems you have by having that kind of crowdsourced understanding 
of the of the sector and we build that into our software so not so it's very likely that what we're building and any specialized software provider is building has deep insight into the market and they build that into their business process in effect you're enjoying the shared knowledge of the whole of the sector technology is another consideration um you know, part of the, the system I described where we get feedback from customers is that we are an agile technology shop. So the technology that we use to deliver software is ever-changing. We are now f almost fully into the cloud for most of our customers. Some of you on the line might have on-premises software, but that's, that's going the way of the dodo bird. By being in a SaaS environment with cloud technology, we can adapt these new technologies, which are just increasing at an amazing rate, faster and quicker, and invisible to you. So you don't get shut out of the latest and greatest. Also, our, we have a process of software delivery called Agile. That's that process where we reach out to the market, and we immediately um, are able to build some of our software based on you know current sector outlook or current customer feedback. Part of that technology is the agile process that we also use that helps us take advantage and get that market information straight into the software better. Flexibility. This is kind of inherent in the SaaS system. There's a lot of things that we can do to uh, address the ever-changing world. The most uh, prominent being the cloud technologies these days, our ability to Basically, fire up uh, an environment and work on software quickly has been enhanced. The, the technology that we use both to write, deliver, and deploy software is, a, is very flexible so that we can take advantage of this ever-changing environment. Other things to think about. Risk. Um, customized software and partially customized software is difficult to maintain. We already mentioned a little bit about the definition of customization. Does that work carry through when the main kernel or main application gets upgraded? If it doesn't, you're going to have to spend money to do it. In a lot of cases, though, organizations don't have the patience and the time to upgrade those customizations when the new version is shipped. After a while, that older code basically becomes uh, a non-asset or something that's not deployable. So there's a tremendous amount of risk involved with main, with by not maintaining that um, those customized codes. There's a risk as far as security goes. There's a risk as far as business process efficiency goes. Uh, and of course, there's a risk if the if the technology then becomes um, not available anymore. Uh, we see this sometimes with browsers uh, where we have to maintain technical capabilities with our browsers. Uh, having old customized software does not lend itself to the ever-evolving standards of, of the software industry. And finally, remember your total cost of ownership. Um, faster deployment, lower risk, more intuitive software, less worry about deploying, accessing through the Internet. These are all things that actually can be quantified by dollars, by the time that your organization is using uh, the software or not using it, as the case may be. So remember about, custom, remember about cost of ownership when you're thinking about your software purchase. I just want to give one example, and then we'll get on with the... Uh, with the questions of, of what we're doing to address the business needs. So we make software for grant makers. Uh, we've got about 1,500 customers for our grant making software. And we want to be able to help our customers configure their grant making processes so that it's tailored for efficiency and effectiveness given their organization. The challenge is for us is that there's 1,500 customers, and there might be 1,400 different processes that our customers go through in their grant-making process, unique to their organization. So how do we make something like workflow, right, the process of tasks, 
getting done and then moving on to a different user to complete a different task in a sequential order, how do we make that happen for f our 1,500 customers? So what we're doing now, and this is software that is uh, not yet released but is in pre-production, it's pretty neat to see, we are now building out a workflow configuration. So if your organization's grant grant making process is super complicated or needs a board review, as most of them do, or maybe needs to be seen by the ED, you can build that in. If a grant under a certain threshold doesn't need to be seen by certain members of the organization because it's small or it's recurring, you can build that in too. In any variant you can think of, we're trying to allow so that our customers can on their own, and this is part of the definition of configuration, custom, uh, configure their software for based on the roles and the tasks in their organization as it relates to grant making. We're going to be able to allow our customers to do this in a matter of minutes. And in effect, those 1,400 different processes or speculated 1,400 different processes, we should be able to accommodate almost all of those different processes not by building customizations, but by, but by building the software that's configurable, right? And that's the way we solve that problem. This is not um, unique to the philanthropic sector. Uh, there's all sorts of, you know, s software that can do this type of work, um, and it's great to be bringing this into the philanthropic sector. Now, when you're finally making the decision, though, Remember, um, I, and if you haven't picked up on my bias, you, you will now. Um, Axios, that software consultant team, you know, their expert opinion is that instead of thinking about customizations, look to implement cost-conducive, agile, efficient solutions with minimal risk for your organization. Basically, look for configurable software that meets almost all the needs of your organization, and then possibly retailor those workflows to either accommodate or take advantage fully of that software. This is a topic that's not, uh, is, is somewhat uh, religious for a lot of folks. If you are thinking about software decision make or thinking about purchasing software, um, and, and making decisions like this, this could be a topic where people could talk for hours on end. I just wanted to give you a little flavor of the 30,000-foot way of thinking about this. But again, you can reach me or follow me on Twitter at Charles Vanek or write me directly at charles.vanek at blackbaud.com. I think we've got a poll, too. And really, this is just uh, allows us to... Nicole, can you jump in here and, and explain the poll? Absolutely. So again, like Charlie has just talked about, if you're interested in learning how BlackBot solutions can be configured to fit your organization, please reach out and let us know. Also, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Charlie. He's an expert on the matter and would love to connect with you all. But uh, I think that'll wrap it up. So thank you, Charlie, so much for presenting today. And thank you so much to the audience for joining us. This will conclude the webinar. I hope you all have a great rest of your week.